Good evening. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington School Committee on Thursday, January 13th, 2022. I am Bill Hayner, the chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. In the affirmative. Mr. Thielman. Here, yes. Mr. Carden. Here, yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. Dr. Holman. Yes. Dr. McNeil. Yes. Mr. Spiegel. Yes. Mr. Mason. Yes. Ms. Elmer. Yes. Uh, is the AEA representative here at this time, Ms. Ferranti? Okay, we'll check in with her later. And uh, the uh, Arlington uh, School Representative, Amy Shalou, Shalou, sorry. Neither were on yet, Bill. Okay, thank you. Tonight's and meeting, the uh, Arlington School Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with the act signed into law on June 16th, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1st, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials in the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, the meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons anticipating by Zoom, participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and whose persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's meeting uh, website using Nova's agenda platform. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. No one has signed up for uh, public comment, so I'm not gonna bother taking the time to read that. Uh, at this time, uh, has the student rep come in yet? No. Not yet. Oh, she comes in, oh, so I'm gonna go over that. Uh, at this time, I would ask uh, Dr. Uh, Holman uh, to update us on uh, the COVID protocols, please. Okay, I, for some reason, cannot share my screen. Um, Hold on a second. Let me try this. Nope. Liz, try again. That might have been my error. No, I don't think it is. Um, I think it's a. Hang with, hang with me for just a second, folks. I think I know what okay. the issue is. It was disabled for everyone, but now it's enabled. Um, I may need to sign out and come back in <laughs> in order for this to work. So can I come back out and in, or how do you want to do this? Go with whatever way is comfortable for you. Let me try this. Okay. I saved that whole minute and a half to talk about public speaking, so we're going to... Let me try one more time. Here we go. Good. You, go. Um, you should be seeing my screen with APS revised protocol A. Yes? yes. Yes. So I just wanted to share an update because we had some adjustments. As everyone knows, 2022 has made quite a dramatic entrance um, and we needed to respond pretty quickly over the break and as we entered school to make sure that we were ready to open school safely and make sure we were able to keep everyone in person. We made the difficult decision to have two early release days at the start of the 2022 year, in part because we wanted to make sure that we had a handle on what our staffing situation was and a plan to address it. Um, one of the hardest 
parts of our day to staff is lunch and recess because it requires us to have a lot more supervisory hands on deck. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we had the ability to supervise that safely, which was part of the uh, reasoning behind the early releases. It allowed us to avoid lunch, um, better understand what our case rates were going to be because it was still pretty uncertain as we entered the year and make sure that we were able to get kids back in person and would be able to open in full effective the Wednesday that we returned. So that was successful and we are managing to make things work. I will not um, sugarcoat things and say that it has not been a challenging week and a half. We have had a lot of staff who have needed to be out uh, both due to oh, their own illness or illness of a family member or the need to take care of um, their children who may have tested positive or whose school or classrooms may have closed. Um, so I wanted to go over revised protocol A and some of the uh, reasoning behind its in implementation as well. So according to the, so the state has multiple protocols. They have their protocol A, and then they have protocol B and C, um, and which protocol you are to follow depends on whether or not you're a close contact, whether or not you're vaccinated, whether or not you tested positive. Protocol A is the only one from DESE's guidelines that we have added some additional requirements to, and protocol A is the one that applies to any individuals who have tested positive for COVID-19. So our revised protocol um, is one that we talked at length with the health department, members of our administrative team about before making a decision about what our approach would be. Uh, we will allow students to return to school on day 11 if they want to, if they are feeling not feeling well enough to return before that, um, or on day six through 10, provided that that individual has tested negative on a rapid antigen test, has been without fever for 24 hours without fever reducing medications, has experienced an improvement in other symptoms, and is able to mask for five additional days with exceptions where necessary, where absolutely necessary for students who may not be able to wear a mask following DESE's um, protocol and FAQs. So we shared some additional information for families that only our rapid antigen tests would be used for return testing after an infection. Um, we want to make sure that we know that a test was returned negative. We also are only allowing students to test to return one time between days six and 10. If we reach a point where we're able to expand that to multiple times in between day six and 10 because of resources, both human and physical, then we will entertain that. But right now we need to make sure that we maintain the resources that we have, both in terms of testing supplies um, and in terms of the actual human beings who are administering some of these tests. And we are uh, we're limited in those capacities. Students uh, who test positive must continue to quarantine until day 11, and those who test negative may attend school the following day. We're right now doing tests to return in a centralized location um, at Arlington High School from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday. We cannot do it next week on Monday because it is a holiday, so we will start retesting on Tuesday. We are looking into uh, options that we might have for allowing students back in on Tuesday, but I, uh, again, we're in a position where our capacity, both human and supply, is pretty limited. And so it may be that students need to wait until Tuesday afternoon. As soon as we have a plan for that, we will communicate it out to the community. I wanted to share a little bit of the reasoning behind this approach. It is one that um, the town instituted for staff and that we've co collaborated, like I said, with the Department of Health on. And it's also aligned with CDC quarantine and isolation guidelines which tell us that if an individual has access to a test and wants to test, the best approach is to use an antigen test towards the end of the day of the five day isolation period. You can collect the test sample only if you're fever free for 24 hours uh, without fever reducing medication. If your test result is positive, the CDC says you should continue to isolate until day 10. If it is negative, you can end isolation but continue to wear a well-fitting mask around others at home and in public until day 10. Also on this uh, chart are our results. So, so far 34.4% of our students who have come in for test and return, which is hundreds, uh, have tested positive and the remaining 65.6% .6 have tested negative. And we understand that antigen tests can return different results depending on where you are in the course of illness and can return, return differing results 
from day to day. Um, and we've heard some concern about the use of antigen tests. We're following the CDC's guidelines around the use of tests um, at the end of a course of illness. And we're using our Binax tests because those have some level of reliability. Uh, they are pretty sensitive. They've worked well for us in identifying positive pools. And we have been able to reliably find the vast majority of the positive pools that we have had. Um, so we are using those tests so that everyone is using the same supplies in order to be able to test to return and so that we can verify those results. Um, it is going well so far. We've been able to welcome a lot of students back into the classroom ahead of that 10 day guideline and we will continue to pilot this through the month of January and decide whether or not it's something we want to continue through February. So those are the updates with regards to COVID um, protocol adjustments and I will share a little bit more with regards to data and numbers and where we're at uh, when I do my update later in the meeting. Happy to take any questions. Any other members have any questions for Dr. Holman regarding this issue? Uh, Ms. Exton. Thank you, not a question. Um, <clears throat> I just wanna say thank you to Dr. Holman and the entire APS team for all of the incredible work that you are doing to keep our students and staff um, as safe as possible during this Omicron surge. We, this entire pandemic, we've heard continually about a layered approach, masking, distancing, ventilation, testing, and vaccinations. And I <clears throat> just, I find that APS has consistently followed through on all of those aspects um, of the mitigation strategies to, to keep everyone safe. You encouraged families to acquire higher quality masks you acquired them for students and staff who couldn't get them for themselves. Students have been in pods, desks have been separated the last two weeks. You changed lunch protocols. People from central office went and covered lunch um, for, some, for classrooms. Um, consistently ensuring that air purifiers are running, ventilation and mechanical things are, are functioning. Uh, the pool testing has been going on since last year. Um, I, and so now this, you know, <clears throat> last change that you've made raising the bar for, um, for positive cases to, to test to return to ensure that we're not accidentally reintroducing um, infectious cases into our school buildings is just another example of all the work and care and thought that you um, and your team and the Arlington Health and Human Services have put into making sure that our students and staff are safe. Um, and then vaccinations are another thing that people talk about and the incredible clinics that have been run um, for five to 11 year olds and boosters and everything. I, um, I, I want the community to know how thoughtful and careful um, you all have been to ensure that all of our students um, are in school um, learning as much as possible. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. Holman, and I hope that you'll pass along my appreciation to, to all of your staff. Just want to say it has been an immense team effort, and I feel lucky every single day to be surrounded by the team that I have in Arlington. It's really an incredible group that finds a way to say yes to just about anything we need to do to take care of kids. It, but it also takes a great leader as well. So thank you from all of us. Now, um, again, turn it over to Dr. Holman uh, for the Arlington High School Program of Studies to introduce it. All right, uh, I will say almost nothing. I will say welcome uh, Mr. McCarthy and Dr. Jenger and um, whichever one of you is going to talk about the AHS Program of Studies, which is in the school committee's materials for tonight, take it away. Good evening, so, everyone. I'm gonna hand it over to Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, so I believe uh, you would have received two packages from me. The first is the program of studies. Um, rather than sit here and read the entire program of studies, uh, which I was asked to do, uh, <laughs> there's an update sheet, <clears throat> excuse me, an update sheet and a list of new courses. Uh, I figured I would do a quick review of that. Um, I will pause occasionally for questions if there are any. Uh, the first up is the policy and general information updates. We have two in this section. One is the MCAS policy. This is just an adjustment based upon the state's changes from COVID uh, from last year. It, what we did was just adjust uh, the relevant scores for what is considered passing based upon DESE's changes um, at the state level. 
Uh, the second piece is the wellness education requirement, which uh, the COVID adjustment we made last year to offset the fact that we had one term where we were fully remote and those PE classes uh, went from graded to pass fail. We have since removed that because this, that the last class affected by that is graduating this year. And so both those pieces have been removed or adjusted. Uh, are there any questions or concerns? Okay, seeing none. Um, we do, we are offering some new courses. And as always, I love to run through the new courses because I love to see the exciting stuff our staff is putting out there. I'm gonna do a quick overview. I'm not gonna run into too much detail, um, but some of the new courses we're offering are Introduction to Architecture, which will be coming through our makerspace. Uh, and for those of you that have had a chance to tour the new building, uh, you've seen the new makerspace. We're very excited to put this new course into effect. Um, I did a tour yesterday as well. If you haven't come by recently, it looks amazing. Fourth and fifth floors are close to done. Uh, we will be uh, extending painting to full year, and that's actually at student request. Uh, we've been offering two half year courses. They want to take it for a full year. Uh, cooking and living on your own has been a very popular class. We are going to offer up a vegetarian option now uh, for those students that want to uh, try that. Uh, we are offering another super course for those of you that don't remember super. Um, super is a Syracuse program that we are tied to. Students who take this course uh, also receive credit from Syracuse University at the conclusion of the year. Our staff are certified as Syracuse professors. Ian McKay has been at the forefront of this in our social studies department for the last couple of years. And now we'll be extending that into the math department. Uh, I believe this course is being brought to us by Dan Sheldon in the math department, um, which, which will be wonderful. I do hope they don't test our services too much with the cybersecurity checking, but uh, really looking forward to that. We're expanding our film offerings to include global film comedies. Um, AP Physics will also be expanding. We've had a very high demand on that recently. Uh, this will be in conjunction with AP Physics that we're already offering. So this will be the next tier in that course. And the Science Department has put forth several electives, um, which they're very excited about uh, as they try and make use of the new facility we're looking at. And so they've got science, training and research, entomology, teaching and lab assistant, linguistics, the science of language, um, geomorphology, and uh, you may remember personal finance, we offer, we've offered it the last couple of years is a super course. Uh, we're now gonna offer a second tier, Ian McKay is gonna be teaching that. Uh, this will be taught at the general level so that any student can take it. Uh, they will not be required to complete the Syracuse University piece, but they also won't receive the credit for that. We'll also continue to offer the super option of that as well. Um, we are putting a few courses into dormancy, so that you all remember, we rotate through some of the courses just to help with the demand. Those courses will be astronomy, Java, script, and artificial intelligence. They'll be back on the docket for next year. And we are removing two courses for next year. One is the power of protest, we have not had a very high demand for that course recently. Uh, the other is AM Recreational Sports, which is um, a PE course we've been offering from 7.30 to 8.15 in the morning. Uh, AM Recreational Sports didn't fill as well as we expected, but the wellness course, which is, um, uh, it did fill. And so we'll, by removing the AM Recreational Sport, we'll be expanding that wellness program in the morning to uh, offer up more, some more sections and hopefully fill those in. Uh, the remainder of the update sheet is just course descriptions. So I will pause at this time if there's any questions. Any members have any questions at this time? I've just got one, Bill. Um, oh, okay. Go ahead, Jeff. We're not, in, in, the, in this uh, discussion of the program of studies, we're not touching on the whole conversation we had about heterogeneous classes. That's not entering today's, th this, this book at all. Oh, Matt, do you want to talk to that or would you like me to? Go for it, Bill. We, we've so, talked about it today. At this, um, we do offer heterogeneous courses and we're not changing that in the program of studies. The larger conversation we had uh, last year and continuing this year around the core classes is going to continue, but that is not in this program of studies. Okay. Thank you. The courses that are offered for Syracuse credit, those credits, will they be... Are they additional credits for a student if they go to Syracuse or 
are they part of the uh, undergraduate study? Most of them are transferable to most colleges. Um, so it, it, if Syracuse is recognized as a college, which in most cases it is, uh, the colleges accept those credits. Thank you. Are there anybody else? Go right ahead, Bill. Was that oh, it? That's, that was it. Any other questions on this? Thank you. I did. Very I, much. Did, I would just like 30 seconds if I can. Go right ahead. Uh, actually, I'm going to take a little bit longer than that. But uh, one, I wanted to give a very large thanks to our nursing department. Um, our nurses at the high school have been working nonstop. Uh, as I left today at five o'clock, they were still there doing testing. And I think it just, I, I can't emphasize enough what an amazing job they're doing. Uh, also, I know there's been a lot of conversation about the new building. Very excited. Um, we're hoping to get some more information out shortly on that. So it is, it looks amazing. And the teachers got their first tour yesterday and they are super excited. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And pass on to the staff uh, our appreciation for all their work, and extra work that's going on, as well as you folks. Okay. Uh, the next Dr. Item Jenger is was raised. I think Dr. Jenger was raising his hand. I just have one thing, which is the other, a couple of other folks to say thank you to. Um, getting through the details of the program of studies, as you can see from Mr. McCarthy's presentation, is a real labor of love and detail. Also, he gets a lot of help from his assistant, um, Joe Broughton, who does a lot of the, the things. And um, in addition to the nurses, the deans have been getting their steps in the last two weeks, um, running around, dragging, bringing people down for second tests, making sure everybody's safe and calm, running the cash registers in the cafeteria. Um, it's been a real all out effort. So I wanted to give them some points as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Schleckman. Are we looking for a motion to either receive or approve? I, I, I would leave it to the body, but I think we, we should be in receipt of it. Okay, motion to receive. Is there a second? Second, but don't we vote this? It's when do we vote this? We vote. We vote acceptance. Or do oh, we we, just, we, well, we we vote to approve it. Do we want to uh, view this as a first read or just to prove this right now? I'm ready to approve. Is there any concern about not? No, this is it's pretty okay. straightforward. So I'll withdraw the mo uh, motion to receive and uh, uh, offer a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Cardin. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. And I vote yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you very much, gentlemen and the staff. At this time, I'd like to go back uh, to the student representative, uh, Amy. Welcome. Do you have anything you'd like to share with us tonight? Uh, no, sorry about being late. I'm very excited to try those new classes that Mr. McCarthy was talking about. Okay, thank you. Okay, the next one is school committee budget priorities. Uh, Mr. Cardin. Thank you. Um, so every year we have this opportunity as a school committee to, now that we've heard some uh, from different administrators and the uh, AEA. Um, this is our chance to give our thoughts um, as the administration continues to develop the budget. So go ahead, Mr. Hainer. I don't know which order you wanna, which, what order you wanna go in. You can start. All right, I'll start. Uh, so um, uh, I thank everybody for the thoughtful presentations, um, particularly the school improvement plan, which is the first time we've, we've been doing this. So it's great to see all that level of detail. Um, uh, as we'll discuss a little bit later, you know, we are getting, getting into a, a period of tighter budgeting, um, partly because we had our school enrollment growth, which, was, which contributed to more funding. And we had some additional funding that we were able to negotiate with the town um, as part of the override. That's coming to it. Both of those are probably coming to an end as um, our enrollment uh, seems to be leveling off. And that deal of from the override is this is the, this is the last year. So um, 
I do think we need to be cautious as we add more staff um, uh, because we just may not be able to carry that on in the future. So um, we had the original multi-year budget plan that included coaches, um, a, a literacy coach and math coach for each elementary school. And I think we need to finish that. Um, but as far as the other coaches that have been talked about, um, you know, I think we need to think more strategically about how we handle um, uh, these issues that are these needs that we're seeing um, and how we can do that in an affordable manner, uh, in a, in a well-structured manner. So that might need a little bit more thinking before we pursue it. And we might not be ready for all that next year. Um, we do have uh, negotiations coming up and we wanna make sure we save enough money for that. Um, and that's gonna be uncertain for a while. So um, it's a bit of a challenging time for, for planning, but I think we need to be flexible um, uh, as we get into the spring and um, you know where there's a lot of there's more uncertainty than normal with enrollment so um, all those things I think um, point to a need for flexibility maybe reserve positions maybe um, uh, putting sort of a list of things that we might want to fund if it turns out we don't need classroom teachers because of enrollment things like that so that's sort of my input thank you Anyone want to volunteer? Or do I, uh, let me just go through. Mr. Thielman, do you have anything? No, I don't. I'm good. Okay. Ms. Exton? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as a classroom teacher, staffing to enrollment and ensuring that we have student-facing staff um, is always going to be a priority for me. So I think, you know, rounding out the eighth grade learning community at Audison, including the special education teacher, is something that we should certainly um, make sure to have happen. I'm, I'm also thinking about um, the teaching positions at the high school as the enrollment there grows. And so we want to be thinking about that piece as well. Um, I know at our, uh, at the presentation at the last meeting, there was a lot of um, conversation about getting more information about things. And so, you know, without specific caseloads um, for special education learning specialists, um, it's hard to know for sure. But again, as someone in an elementary school, um, that's something that I think a lot about. If that's something that the special educators are feeling like they need, then that's something I think we need to think about. Um, and then I think a lot about the impact that COVID has had on students' social and emotional um, well-being and their learning. And so just thinking about the way that social workers, um, the needs for social workers um, across the district from, from pre-K to 12, um, while we think about how we're continuing to respond to, uh, to the impact of the, of the pandemic. Um, and then the last piece for me, um, are, are the librarians. We've talked a lot. They've been in this five-year plan. We're coming to the end of that. Um, we've started to fill some of those um, positions. I, I, you know, I get nervous about it because we're, as we move into FY24 and beyond, um, it's going to get really complicated. But, you know, I think that that's a position um, where we're asking paraprofessionals to do um, the job of a of an educa of an educator, a licensed um, school librarian, and so I think that we should be acknowledging them and compensating them for their work. Um, and finally, um, we have negotiations coming up, and you know, teachers deserve a, a fair raise. So, thank you, Mr. Schluckman. Thank you. Uh, uh, I came up with a list of a few things that, that I think are priorities in my mind. First is to fund our collective bargaining agreements, and we don't know what they're going to be, but we uh, have an obligation to uh, make sure that we come up with a fair and reasonable settlement of the contracts that are before us and have the money set aside for that so that um, we don't have to make uh, retroactive cuts. Secondly, I wanna make sure that our low paid jobs are more competitive than the current labor market. Uh, um, you know, para substitute teachers uh, 
I, I think that the, the stark reality is with uh, uh, low skilled jobs getting up to 17, 18 dollars an hour, we need to do better um, there. Um, the third is to make staffing adjustments based on the enrollment changes and where we have increases or, or things level off. Uh, we need to look at where our enrollment's going to be and make sure that our staffing is there where the kids are. And the thing that I've heard often enough over the past few years is uh, pertaining to social workers. I, you know, I don't think we have an adequate supply of social workers that are not committed to special needs population. I, I think that there's a lot of work out there that needs to be done. Kids need help, particularly after uh, the past couple of years of disruption. And so that uh, beefing up our social worker for ta uh, task, uh, our social work, number of social workers in the district and, and beefing up that uh, supply, I think is important. So that, that's what I've been thinking of in terms of priorities, looking at the budget going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Hainer. Um, I think for me, the biggest piece is, um, you know, making sure that we can bargain a good contract um, for our staff uh, because everybody is up this year and that's a, a big deal. And I think um, obviously we want to, um, you know, continue to add to the, to the table where we can, obviously. And I think also understanding that the way bargaining works is when you don't, you, when you're unable to bring enough money to the table, you give up flexibility, right? Like that's just how it works. You accept rigidity if you can't bring money to the table. And so, you know, what we can do within reason, obviously, and when we come, that's part of coming to an agreement. But um, I think that we want to be able to, you know, make the small changes within the contract that we maybe need or want to, to deliver, um, in the way that that we may want to do and and that is that costs money as it should um so that for me is a big one um the the line 79 in uh, dr holman and mr mason's chart around paraprofessional pay um obviously you know in the salary study we are we're way off with that group and and i appreciate it's a large group and we're only going to be able to make incremental changes because when you have a lot of people, it's a it's a high multiplier. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try, um, and that we can you know continue to to you know um, chip away at that um, as much as possible. So those those for me are really um, a lot of what my um, focus has been on in looking at FY twenty three and FY twenty four. We're going to hear more about the FY twenty three budget here tonight. Um, but I, you know, those are are real real priorities. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank fellow members for bringing the things up. I concur with regard to negotiations going forward. And thank you, Ms. Exton, for mentoring the librarians. Uh, that's something very dear to my heart. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add at this time on this? Thank you. Uh, the next item, a budget, it's listed as uh, FY23 budget acceptance. And as Mr. Mason down. Thank you. Um, Dr. Holman, would you like to say anything before I start or I can go right Take into it? Take it away, Mr. Mason, go for it. All right, let me just share my screen. Uh, can everybody see my screen or somebody confirm? Yes. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. I thank you for uh, allowing me to uh, you know, present this information before you as a school committee uh, decide if you're going to accept the FY23 town appropriation for the schools for next year. Um, on this, this slide, um, it shows uh, uh, what's the, in the formula to fund Arlington Public Schools uh, in the long range plan. Uh, so starting at the top, um, which doesn't necessarily influence the actual amounts in the, in the, in the budget, but it's, part of funding the town, which is the state aid provided from chapter 70. Um, on In this chart, fiscals 20 to um, 2022 
uh, report the actual amounts that the town of Arlington received. Uh, the chapter 70 is a formula that uh, includes enrollment at, the, at the, the base of it, as well as you know, the community income levels and uh, tax base. Um, so also, um, what you'll see is fiscal 23, uh, there's an amount that is projected, which is a conservative projection that uh, the deputy of the, of the town uses, um, which is a 1% increase over the prior year amount. Um, that number does not include whether uh, the factor in the enrollment growth in that particular figure. Um, if you'll notice on that line in fiscal 22, the town of Arlington was held harmless based on the chapter 70 formula um, due to the enrollment decrease of uh, um, that was driven by COVID-19 um, and the shutdown. Um, so the town saw a $30 per pupil uh, increase in fiscal uh, for the fiscal 22 uh, chapter 78. Um, this projection does not include um, for fiscal 23 any changes that may come from the Student Opportunity Act. Um, and we'll probably get a better picture of this number once the governor releases the fiscal 23 governor's budget, which uh, the governor's required every year, the fourth Wednesday of January to provide or submit that to the house. The, um, as we go down on the slide, you'll see that there's the year over year student growth, um, which um, that is also a, another factor of the funding formula for, formula for Arlington Public Schools in the long range plan. Um, the plan uh, adjusts funds and arrears based on enrollment changes from the prior year. So for an example of this would be in fiscal 20, the budget is based off of the changes from enrollment from fiscal 18 to fiscal 19, which is the year over year growth right here, which would then get added down into the growth factor in the proposed school appropriation from the town. Um, I will speak more about fiscal 23 as I go on and explain this. So, as we go down, we'll notice that uh, the formula will then also multiply um, using a deci per pupil spending um, with using the most up-to-date deci per pupil spending. Um, for this fiscal year, um, and our, we're not moving to fiscal 20 due to the uh, increase in uh, the per pupil amount. Um, and since we are seeing a decrease in the growth factor, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it would have penalized the district or the school department more because the school saw the growth rate at a lower per pupil growth factor using if we use the fiscal 20. So the, the, the proposed, the current proposed budget for the town shows uh, locking in on the fiscal 19 per pupil spending amount. As you go down, you'll see under proposed school appropriation from the town is the school committee adds from the override. So in fiscal 20 uh, budget year, uh, it was a start of a four year override of, um, and, and part of that, the commitment was to address some of the needs of the schools by um, infusing about $2.8 million over four years. The original configuration of that was 600,000 for fiscal 20, 600,000 for fiscal 21, fiscal 22 and fiscal 23, which was the, the last years of the override was supposed to see $800,000 increases. However, due to uh, once again, COVID, the, the, there was an adjustment made downward of a $460,000 to fiscal 21, which then was later uh, allocated evenly over fiscal 22 and fiscal 23, $800,000 amounts. The, these figures each year get added back into, in the following year, the general education costs. So the general education cost is, is the school committee add from the override, plus the growth factor, plus the general education base, and uh, it's applied with a 3.5% increase uh, each year. And then the special education line is, uh, not necessarily aligned to how the budget, how the school committee approves the budget, but it increases 7% year over year. Um, and that's to account for the needs for special education, or well, the, the assumption of special education costs going up at a higher rate. Um, that analysis was done years 
uh, ago, and uh, in some cases, it still is occurring um, at that rate. And then what's different this year is the, the bottom line, which is an added, is added for this year, an acknowledgement that the growth rate, we're seeing the growth factor is decreasing by $1,379,700, is an offset of a one-time infusing of fusion of, uh, of funds of $970,000 for COVID-19. Um, the funds not necessarily specific to use for COVID-19 related items, but is, it is uh, to help support the needs of students um, and acknowledging that due to this year, a correction um, of enrollment growth. So last year, the schools did not see a decrease in the budget on the growth factor when the budget, um, when the enrollment had decreased in uh, fiscal 21 to um, from fiscal 20 to fiscal 21. And therefore it is being proposed that it is corrected to reduce the budget to a net amount to match the enrollment in the heart of, or the intent of the long range plan, which is by 189, down by 189 students by the per pupil growth factor of 7,300 which is the, the growth factor that you see here, which gives us um, in the town, the, the, the current draft of the town budget, a total uh, Arlington Public Schools budget of for the town appropriation side of $84,447,869. Uh, this is uh, a change of $4.3 million about $4.3 million and a 5.42% change from last year's budget. Um, I will uh, can answer any questions uh, and I will heed my time at this point. Any of the members have a question at this time for Mr. Mason? I've got a narrow screen. I don't see anybody. Is it? Okay, thank you. Uh, seeing none, Mr. Cardin. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, so in, um, in years past, we've used different wording, I, I checked, but the wording that I proposed in the motion is that we acknowledge this figure. Um, you know, I've always had issues with us accepting a budget figure when our budget hasn't been developed yet. Um, in the past, you know, we've sort of all agreed that the long range plan number would be our number, but this year in particular, because of the adjustments that Michael just went over, um, I do think it is better to acknowledge this number rather than accept it, making it clear to, you know, to the town administrator that, you know, we have a statutory um, obligation to develop a budget uh, and we, we still retain the authority to uh, submit a different budget request um, if, if that's what we so choose. So we acknowledge that amount. Um, you know, I think uh, we've had a lot of discussions at Long Range Planning uh, over the last few months about the upcoming, you know, fiscal cliff that the town is facing. There's a lot of concern over that. Um, we also presented uh, very clearly how the school department has a lot of needs. And so those two things are in conflict um, and this is the compromise that's on the table um, for us to review and consider and for now to acknowledge because the, the town manager also has a statutory obligation under the town manager act to submit his budget on January 15th. So he has to have a number in there for the school department budget. And this is the number that he's chosen, you know, with consultation with Dr. Homan, this is the number he's chosen to put in. Um, but again, I think, you know, we, we as a school committee need to have more discussion over that um, as we go forward and see what the budget is going to be, um, uh, particularly with that 970, which we, we greatly appreciate that we're, we've been given that 970,000 um, in additional funding, but as of now, it's only for one year. Um, so that would be very problematic if it's just for one year. So um, we did discuss it at budget subcommittee today. And, and I think the consensus was, you know, um, this is a number that's gonna be in a, the town manager's budget, so we should acknowledge it. Um, uh, and if anybody has any questions or additional comments, that's great, but I'll move right now to um, acknowledge um, the, the town appropriation of, um, I don't have the number in front of me. Um, 
There we go. Just a minute. On your screen. Ah, there you go. Of, uh, no, it's not there. I can't see it. My 84. 84. There. Oh. You want me to give it to you? All right, 84,447,869. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Mr. Schlickman. Yeah, um, I, I appreciate Mr. Cardin's caution in terms of acknowledging rather than accepting, given the discussion that came on the floor of town meeting last year, um, I, I hate to go forward without, with any number, without a, a firm knowledge that the whole town is uh, behind it, uh, and and that even if we were to accept it, that we'd have uh, 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 no problem with the finance committee going forward. Uh, the rhetoric in last year's town meeting was a little disturbing, uh, I would say. So. I think it's best right now to acknowledge the number, work around that number, and see where we come out as the budget is developed. So thank you, Mr. Cardin. Mr. Thielman. Uh, yes, I just want to make sure I understand so that the, the, the change in intent here. So when we accepted the number in the past, we took all the votes in the past and said, we accept it. What do we think, Len? What do we, what was the No, last? no. So, so for the past two years, we accepted. The, the prior year in 2019, we acknowledged. Um, I didn't go back further than that. I mean, I've had this, <laughs> I've had this um, problem for a while since I've been on the committee. And Jeff, I think I think it was in 2019 that you suggested using the word acknowledge instead of accepting. Um, uh, and so, I don't know why we went back to accepting. I think over the last couple of years has been more. Um, uh, more agreement because we were in a multi-year plan. Um, and, uh, you know, here because of the, of COVID and because of the enrollment change that's hitting us and, and requiring a give back of, you know, 1.3 million, um, you know, it's just different than, than last year. Okay. I just was trying to, I would, thank you, Len. I was trying to get my head around the past. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> Either way, I think the committee has always had the legal right to, to, to go to town meeting if we want to do and say we want more money. We've never done that in the past, but we've always understood that we have the legal right to do that. We, we've never done that in all my years on the committee. Um, okay, so all we're saying, we're, so we're acknowledging this, we're telling the town manager to build the budget with this set, with this number, and then we'll see where the conversation goes. We've always had that right, so it's really no change in actual practice. It's just a we're going back to the terminology that we did, we, we adopted in 2019. Okay, I just wanted some understanding. Thank Is there you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, would you state the motion one? I'm sorry, Ms. Morgan. Sorry, thank you, Mr. Hainer. And I think also. Mr. Thielman, the, the challenge here, the real sticking point is the, 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 the 970,000 and the fact that you know, at this point, it's a one year, one time offer, right? And budgetarily, one year, one time offers are very challenging. They're not particularly useful for bargaining <laughs> because they go away. Um, and so it, it, you know, there needs to be some more clarity and understanding around the intent of that component, I think, before um, at least some of us would be in a position where we would be willing to, to move towards acceptance of the number. But I can only speak for myself on that. So thank you, Mr. Hainer. Is there anyone else? Okay, the motion is to acknowledge the budget. Would you repeat the number one more time, please? Do you have it? I'm sorry. Mr. Mason, can you repeat the number for us? Yes, uh, 84 million. $447,869. Thank you. Roll call vote, Mr. Cardin. Yes. 
Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Mason. Uh, Mr. Schlickman, school committee 2022-2023 meeting dates. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me, uh, we are voting the meeting dates for 2022-23. Um, as you're aware, the policy requires us to uh, approve a calendar of 19 Thursdays in which we're going to meet during uh, each school year uh, as the school calendar is developed. Um, the policy also states that we need to go in uh, the approved school committee calendar shall be distributed to all principals, administrators, with instructions that every effort shall be made to avoid scheduling evening events on school committee meeting nights. By voting these dates here and now, I think that we are providing more than sufficient notice to ensure that uh, there are no conflicts that pull members away from school committee meetings. Um, <clears throat> this pattern of meetings uh, aligns to the one that we're in for this uh, school year, so it's non-controversial, and we always have the ability as a committee to either uh, cancel a meeting or add special meetings. So this is uh, our first notice as we're uh, building it, this into the 22-23 school calendar. Uh, so I move approval of these dates. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Carden. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, policy BEDL land acknowledgement. Second read, Mr. Schlickman. I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Carden. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. Policy KFD amendment. Second read. Mr. Schlickman. Move approval. Is there a second? I, I second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Carden. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Uh, Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. Um, I do not see the next person on the agenda, Ms. Swan. So I'm going to pass this and move down to approval of MOA for AEA Unit A educated. Evaluation for the 2021-2022 work year. Mr. Spiegel. You discussed this, uh, we discussed this last time in executive session and now um, this is a, a sort of a, a revision of our current year evaluation agreement just for this year uh, in recognition of, of the teachers and administrators. Um, workloads this year to alleviate uh, some of that workload for both of them and still accomplish the goals of our evaluation system. And um, we would ask uh, the school committee to approve it. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Just a clarification, this is just for the rest of this year, am I correct? That's correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Carden. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. And still don't see anyone. So I will move down. Superintendent's report, Dr. Holman. Okay. I'm going to share my screen once again. Um, you should see on your screen the current. Uh, Distribution of cases, both in Arlington Public Schools and today's update for the Arlington average daily case rate. It will surprise no one to learn that we have seen a significant uptick in cases in the schools and in the community. 
Um, the, the schools continue to mirror case rates in the community with the exception of, I will say, um, are slightly lower. Our, our positivity rates are slightly lower in the school than they are in the community. And we don't have as many cases at this point this week as we did at this point last week, which is a positive trend. Um, of sorts, I will say this week has felt a lot like last week in terms of staffing challenges. Um, we've had about the same number of staff out each day, but it has not continued to increase in the way that it did last week. And um, the schools have put some contingency plans in place that seem to be working okay for the time being. We are continuing to see cases come in from across the community and um, a lot of spread that, that is happening primarily within households at this point, um, which gives us an indication along with some of the other data, particularly from mass, wa mass wastewater, that we may begin to see a dip and decline in case rates over the next several days and weeks. So we're, we're hanging on, we're committed to keeping kids in school. Um, I really value, as we said earlier, the partnership we have had from our teachers, our nurses, our administrators, and several of you who have covered lunches for us or substituted classes. Um, and we really appreciate all of that help. We have had a number of uh, college students who have been recruited by their parents to come and help us out and substitute some classes. And that's been wonderful to have as well. Uh, it's really been quite a testament to the Arlington staff and community just how um, all hands on deck the whole team has been and with a smile in their eyes and I imagine on their mouths but I can't see it through the N95 KN95 masks that they're wearing. So in other updates we have um, as I mentioned our APS revised protocol A which will extend at least until February 1st with additional messaging on any adjustments to either where we're conducting the testing um, or any adjustments to the protocol itself uh, before February 1st. We have received high quality KN95 masks for staff and some high quality KN95 masks for students which have been distributed to the school. We do not have enough for all staff and all students to have a daily uh, swap of KN95 masks. And so what we've told parents is that this is merely a recommendation that any mask a student will wear that is well fitting is the best mask for them. Um, that really what's important is that they come to school masked and that they maintain um, the mask on over their nose for the day. And so we're reminding kids, you know, keep it, keep the mask on, keep it over your nose. Um, and so far things are going pretty well. We have not seen significant evidence of spread in schools. Um, we continue to monitor for that. We keep a very close eye on things. And when we need to, we do additional follow-up testing. We are expecting, in addition to the masks we've already received, an additional 9,000 or so home tests, home by, uh, tests that are easy to take at home, not our Binax tests, uh, that we can distribute to staff and families as needed to help them monitor for uh, the presence of COVID-19 at home. We're also expecting some additional Binax. Those will uh, supplement our stock for tests to return. There are um, delays in a lot of shipments right now, and so we're not expecting a lot of these supplies to come in in short order, which is part of why we're maintaining the one time only on test to return programming. Uh, I'll, I just said it, but I had to put it in a bullet point and in writing that we're extremely grateful for the coverage assistance we've had from staff and all over the community. And then I have a couple of other updates that are not related to COVID-19. So these will be my favorite ones. Um, we have an equity audit that we are working on and candidates have been interviewed by a committee of representatives from across the school system, including some students and some teachers. Uh, we um, interviewed several candidates as facilitators of our equity audit and we have narrowed it down to a few candidates who will be interviewing with myself, um, I believe Dr. McNeil and Margaret Thomas so that we can learn more about their candidacy for uh, this important equity audit that we would like to do. Uh, for strategic planning, we are working right now on an RFP for a facilitator for our strategic planning this spring, and that will post in the next couple of weeks as soon as we can uh, get that completed and posted for us to consider some facilitators for strategic planning. Whoever we are ch is chosen for this will be spending a significant amount of time with a group of about 50 to 60 stakeholders that will include students, families, community members and elected officials, uh, teachers and administrators from the Arlington Public Schools. Um, and then we are also, as you all know, in the process of doing a lot of budget planning. And this includes some steps that uh, will be new to us this year. And I'm really grateful to Mr. Mason for all of the work he's done to organize this year's budget planning process. 
We will be implementing a staff roster review with the principals so that we can make sure we have a really clear handle on the staff that are at each school and start to think about what an appropriate um, model or staffing model for schools might look like. And we're also implementing some position control approaches to make sure that we have uh, approval mechanisms in place when new positions are posted and that we can make sure that we have a handle on what positions may be rolling forward into future budgets um, and which ones may be one-time things or ads that are necessary for a particular project or initiative. And then um, the last thing on my update is one that I don't particularly love giving to the school committee, but I am in a position where because of some of the things that have come up over the last several weeks, I need to uh, um, request that we delay my formative assessment submission for one more meeting. It was um, going to be given to you at the next meeting. And I think it's important that I prioritize the entry plan report over the formative assessment because I think that that can inform some of the formative assessment uh, feedback that all of you give me. So I would like to submit the entry report um, and at our next meeting at the end of January and then submit the formative assessment materials in the first meeting of February. And with that, I will stop sharing and take any questions from the committee. It's an awful lot. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's, it's great information. Very appreciative of it. Uh, I'd just like to respond to the last thing and then I'll, I'll turn it over to members of the committee. Uh, you have been doing yeoman service as well as the rest of the committee, uh, community uh, in, in the system. And I personally see no problem in delaying it uh, at the formative assessment. Uh, it's not that you've been sitting on your duff all this time and we are very appreciative. That's not the greatest language, huh, Jeff? Uh, anyway, uh, is there anyone- I, I like it, I think it's good. Thank you. Uh, Paul. Yeah, I'm very appreciative of the fact that uh, this has been an extraordinarily busy time uh, with, with, with all the COVID uh, activity that we've been doing as well as uh, the day-to-day -day operations. So I'd like to move uh, approval of the delay of the submissions uh, by the superintendent. Second. There's, thank you. Any further discussion on that? Roll call vote, Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Mr. Carden. Yes. Ms. Morgan. She's off for the moment and I vote yes this time. So thank you. Is there any other uh, questions or uh, thing? Uh, Ms. Keyes? I just, this seems like the best time to say it. I want you all to know how incredibly proud I am to work in Arlington these past two weeks. I feel like we have been doing such a great job to keep our schools open and to keep everybody safe. And it has been all hands on deck. And I mean, that's teachers giving up prep periods, that, that's paras jumping into grade levels they've never seen before. That's our central office staff going down to schools to cover. Um, and particularly our nurses who are just my superheroes right now. Um, it, it's so great to be part of a team where we're all working on this together. And I wanna make sure that the community knows and that you all know that like we as staff really appreciate how things have been going. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dr. Holman. Thank you. Please pass on to the entire staff our appreciation. Uh, and Julie, please let the rest of the teachers know uh, how appreciative we are. I know the parents are. Uh, I've heard nothing but positive things in the community uh, about this uh, Arlington. And from several teachers in other communities have indicated we've set a very high bar for them. So thank you again. Uh, Ms. Diggins, uh, any sign of Ms. Swan? Not yet. Okay. Um, Chairman? Yes. Yeah, this is a reappointment. Yeah, and we, have, we can have moved this without. Okay, uh, and, and 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 I've been very active with the transportation advisory committee over the past couple of years, and uh, Ms. Swan has been an excellent uh, member of the committee. Uh, I think that she's more than earned reappointment. So I move that we reappoint her for a four-year term on the transportation advisory committee. Uh, beginning January 1st, 2022, expiring December 31st, 2025, contingent upon the open meeting law, state ethics, town anti-harassment, and town anti-fraud laws and policies. Second. Any further discussion? 
Roll call vote. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Hexton. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Ms. Schl Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes, unanimous vote. Uh, Ms. Dickens, if she comes in, tell us she's been reappointed. Will do. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests, in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Warrant number 22137 in the amount of $819,215.30. Warrant number 22148 in the amount of $720,316.87. School committee regular meeting minutes, December 16th, 2021. Motion to some motor. Second. Uh, roll call vote. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Exton. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. Subcommittee and liaison uh, reports. Uh, budget. Uh, Mr. Cardin, uh, do you have anything to add from what's been said prior to the meeting? During the meeting? Uh, no, I don't think so. Just that um, Dr. Osney requested everyone to um, forward their uh, budget priorities to her as well. Thanks. Thank you. Community relations, Ms. Exton. Thank you. Uh, there will be a school committee chat on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., which is different from our Saturday at 11 a.m., um, primarily for grades 6 through 12, but everybody is welcome. And the Zoom link is on the APS calendar on the APS website. Thank you. Well, is the host or, or who is the, who's the, it's me and who I else? I think it's you and Len, I believe. Okay, should be fun. All right, we'll draw a crowd, Len. We'll draw a crowd. Curriculum instruction assessment accountability, Mr. Cardin. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled on January 25th. I think that's Thank you. a couple Facilities, of Facilities, Mr. Thielman. No report. Policy and procedure, Mr. Schleckman. No report. Arlington High School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman. Yeah, the project is moving forward on time. We've got good news today about supplies arriving uh, per schedule. And, um, you know, we should have the, 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 I don't know, Liz, if I say this, am I gonna jinx it? It looks like we're on target to open as scheduled uh, on the 28th of February. But everything, you know, there's a lot of little things that have to happen, but it looks like we're on schedule. And so it's very exciting and uh, a great moment for the town. Ms. Swan, welcome. Uh, we are so far ahead of schedule. You've already been reappointed. Laura, you're uh, back in. So it, 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 you, you got to, Mr. Schlickman sung your praises from day one. Is there anything you'd like uh, to add to it so or anything? Um, not this moment, but okay. thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, are there any liaison reports at this time? Any announcements at this time? Any future agenda items? I want you all to know, I kiddingly said the meeting would be over by 7.30. Haven't missed it by much. Bill, great take, job. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Don't move. For a second. second. It's not debatable. Mr. Second. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Ms. Axton. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Yes. Mr. Schleckman. Yes. And uh, Ms. Morgan. Yes. And I vote yes. Been vivid. Good job, Bill. Way to go.